All right, well, welcome back everybody. So as you can see, it is finally time to do another fire pit build. It actually is nice and cool this morning. It's gonna be cool the next several days. So it's got me in the mood to do a fire. I just did one of these a while back. Y'all have seen me use it a lot on the channel. I love that fire pit. It's cut out of one of these huge propane tanks. It's got really thick metal. It should last a long time. So I had a uh, viewer reach out to me several times for the other end of this and uh, <clears throat> I told them no a couple different times because I had plans to use this and these were very hard to find. I actually recently went out and looked for this particular size and I just can't find it no more. Uh, this just isn't a common residential size propane tank. It's 41 inches across, the metal, I don't know, quarter inch, three eighths thick, way thicker than anything you could ever get at the store. Uh, so like I said, I was like, no, I think I want to keep it. Finally, uh, <laughs> he's like, hey, you know, I'll offer you this. And he happened to catch me at just the right time that there was a particular tool that I was really wanting to help make this build go easier and to use around the shop. And it's a tool that y'all recommend last time that y'all sent me do the last fire pit build. So without further ado, let me at least show you that tool and then we'll get into building this thing. So say hello to my little friend. This is a beast of a grinder. So I decided to break down and stick with my Dewalt theme because y'all know I love Dewalt tools. And I got to looking online at these much larger grinders with huge cutoff wheels. So I wound up going with a seven inch version. This is kind of a medium duty uh, version here. I looked at the nines, they were huge. They had super high amperage draws and they were quite a bit more money. And I was back and forth, but you know, I don't run an industrial shop here. I'm not so sure that I need a gigantic nine inch grinder, but this huge seven inch is night and day more powerful than the little four inches that I used last time to cut one of these tanks open. All right, so what I did last time is you've got these big welded in rings where they weld the dome to the uh, main frame of the tank. And I use that as my cutting guide for last time. And it took forever to cut through the little four and a half inch grinder. Eventually down the road, I wanna get a plasma cutter, but it's just not in the budget right now. And I just come down here and took a peek at this. I know it's a bit dark, but that steel is every bit of three eighths thick. So real, real thick steel, and no wonder my little four and a half inch grinder couldn't cut through it uh, very well at all. I'm curious to see how this big seven inch does. It's a lot more powerful, a lot higher amperage, but this is very, very thick steel. It still may take it a while to cut through with that. That's what we're about to find out. Uh, what else we have to do? You can see my old pit over here. I know it's dark, it's still pretty early in the morning. See, I got big robust legs on it. Those were the legs actually off of this tank from last time. I just trim them off the bottom. So since I don't have legs this time, what I'm gonna do is I got some real heavy duty two by two square tubing. So we're gonna have to make some legs uh, for that as well. So this will be the first time using this. I guess let's fire it up and see if we can get the end of this tank cut off. Well, I can tell you this much, I'm already through it. Along with making a nice deep scoring cut, there is absolutely no comparison between this and the little four and a half inch grinders. Now they have their place, but holy moly, that's got a lot of power. I can't believe it just cut through three eight steel that quick, even after making a bunch of slices. I'm already on a section that far slapped through it. So I'm just gonna have to be careful I don't pinch my blade and bust it. Because if there's one thing that does make me nervous about grinding wheels in general, or cutting wheels, them exploding. That's why I've tried to go ahead and put a bunch of junk on. But I can tell you, this is probably gonna be about 10 times quicker than it was last time. So at the moment, I'm glad I bought this, but we're about to work it pretty hard, so let's see if it holds up.
Woo! Well, I got it, but I must say that was neither easy nor safe. Uh, this thing is dangerous. <laughs> there is such a power difference between this and one of those little four inch grinders that uh, you gotta be real careful. And, and I made a few mistakes. I even had this thing snatched completely out of my hands and hit the dirt one time. But I just destroyed about $25 worth of blades to make this one cut. So there's some things I'm definitely gonna do different next time. Otherwise, I'm gonna go out of business in the fire pit business if it keeps costing me this much to make one cut. Or otherwise, I can justify that plasma cutter pretty quickly. Something I am disappointed about with Dewalt. So, as I'm making my cuts, I would say I probably pinch that blade, including one time that I couldn't even get it out. I had to disassemble the tool on this while the blade stayed stuck in it. I probably pinched it five to six times. Now, I'll say five out of six of those times, it was because I was making cuts all the way around and not leaving metal every so often, and this drum was shifting. I was going around with screwdrivers and kind of making wedges to help myself out. But next time, I'll either weld me a bar across the top every so often to keep the, the dome from shifting while I cut, then I can come back and grind those tack welds off. And, uh, you know, I think that should keep it from clamping down on the blade. However, one of the first cuts that I made, I was only cutting this far into it. There's no way the tank shifted. And this thing bound up so bad in the cut. Uh, like I said, I had to try to disassemble it on, well, no, the first one I had to disassemble actually wedged in there the second time. It wedged so bad that it tightened this nut down so tight once this caught and you know the arbor kept spinning that I spent almost 45 minutes to an hour off camera trying to get this nut loose. This little piece of crap, flimsy wrench that comes with it, I bent it up so bad I had a cheater bar on it. I was hitting it with hammers, everything. I could not get this nut to break loose because it had tightened now so tight. And I've had this happen two or three times today already. Also, underneath the blade, if you're familiar with these, you know, the blade goes down, you got the nut that goes on top, but underneath there is a, uh, I forget what it's called, that goes down over the arbor that supports, it's a flange. Right here, this slides down and gives the blade something to rest on so the blade's not, you know, cramping down in the tool. Well, that one time that it tightened down so hard, it actually crushed Dewalt's piece of crap pop metal flange. It is busted in four pieces. I go ahead and break it on apart. But it, it looks like flimsy pot metal. Disappointing. Fortunately for me, after 45 minutes of finally getting the tool apart, I had to go clamp it into a vise and, and really wrench down to get this thing to come apart so I could change the blade. I discovered that my old cheap portal cable or porter cable that I've had for years actually comes with nice steel flanges and they just so happen to fit. I mean, that's rusting up, that's good steel, no pot in the metal, really heavy, thick stuff. So luckily I still had uh, my portal cable wrench and all. So I took my little four and a half inch apart, put these flanges on here. They fit perfectly. They're nice, thick, solid steel, again, not pot metal. And that's what I've been using to finish my cuts. So I'm probably gonna get online and order some portal cable flanges to use on my Dewalt because I do not want what is clearly pot metal back on this tool again. I guess we live in that day and age where, where everything's built in China or most of the stuff is, you kind of get what you pay for. And I knew this was a medium duty tool, but dang, first time out using it, already busting pieces apart. But I feel like it's gonna be okay with these steel flanges. I'll just order some of those. In the meantime, I'll just keep using the flanges off my porter cable. So, got all that out of the way. I've always told you I'll keep it honest on the channel. I'm a huge Dewalt fan, but uh, they suck this time. Flimsy little wrench that won't even get a good stuck nut off. Although the porter cable wrench is thicker, solid steel, and can get it off. And pop metal pieces. As far as the tool goes, tremendous amount of power, scary power. Like I said, it, it actually caught one time and snatched completely out of my hands. Kind of scared the heck out of me. Got to be really careful with this. So I'm always going to wear good PPE using this. Like I said, next time I build one of these, I think if I tack weld every so often or leave a small stretch of metal that I may come back and even cut with the Sawzall uh, to keep from pinching these blades that are going 8,000 RPMs. I think I can be more successful next time and maybe get it down to where I'm using two blades, you know, $10 worth instead of 25 to make a cut. So let's look at the fire pit, enough, enough rambling. Gracious, that is a big old spider. I think I'm gonna throw him in with a deal. 
Woo. All right, so you can look here. I mean, look at this, y'all. This is every bit of 3.8, probably half inch thick steel right here, although it does have a welded ring in this section. But if you look back at the tank itself, where there is no ring, every bit of 3.8. I mean, this is some good, good stuff right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my big seven inch grinding wheel on and grind this down flat because some of these cuts are a little wavy and I wanna get this nice, uh, this top nice and smooth. I don't want nothing that'll cut nobody. And uh, I may flip it on over, go ahead and bust a lot of this paint off. I do have a wire wheel too. Then we've got to figure out how to do some feed on there. You know, I got to thinking, I've got this big center section of uh, tank here. I had originally thought about making like a stump burner out of it. However, that's way too big. I'll have to use a smaller tank for a stump burner. But my goodness, 3 8 thick steel. I'm not throwing this away and I'm not scrapping it. It'll make some awesome fire rings, I think. So I'll probably come back and make, you know, foot long cuts every so often and get several really nice heavy duty fire rings out of here. May take some rebar and bend and weld me some handles so you can pick it up, you know, if you want to get out of the way and scoop the ash up off the ground. Because a lot of people like fire rings and burning straight on the ground, but they want to contain their wood and coals, keep them from falling out. So I think these are going to make excellent, long lasting, heavy duty fire rings. So that's something I've got in mind right there. I'll put this back in the woods for now though, and we'll get to working back on the pit end.
All right, so I cut these 3 8 thick feet plate because I didn't want the hollow uh, two by two to kind of sink down in the ground, get mud, water all up in it. That's just gonna cause it to rust out. So I figured these thick heavy duty feet should allow it to not sink in the ground and keep the uh, legs from rusting out for years to come. Well, I decided I'd bring it out here and put it on the uh, storm shelter slab since it's one of the last places in the yard that has sun right now. But I tell you what, walking up to it, it almost looks like the perfect size slab. Maybe if it was like a 10 by 10 with some chairs around it, we could have a little fire pit slab. But this pit is massive. You just don't appreciate how big and thick it is until you see one in person. So, oh, I wish I could find a lot more of these tanks. I've actually done went looking and uh, I'll have another video out pretty quick. Uh, I have went and got some more tanks. Problem is I can't get them quite this big. This thing is massive, 41 inches across, three eighths inch thick steel. Oh man, wish I could get a pile of them. I regret not buying more when I had the opportunity to do so. But I did uh, get some tanks that I think are gonna be around 36 inches. So still pretty massive fire pits, real thick metal. So I may start doing a little you know, a few little fire pits on the side. I would love to do enough of them, like I said, to get me a MIG welder and eventually build me a welding table so I can do some proper welding. But looking at this thing out here on this slab, <laughs> golly, it's massive. So uh, I really hope the guy that I built this for enjoys it. You know, it's, it's nothing custom like you see with laser jet engraving and deer heads and all that stuff on the side, but I think this guy is like me, just truly appreciates the fact that you about can't go anywhere and find something this thick that'll last as long as this will. So uh, hopefully he enjoys it. I tell you what, I really do kind of like the legs. I used the old propane tank legs on my last one, but I, I kind of like the way that looks. Looks really good for a patio, although I think he's going to put his out there on dirt like mine and just kind of burn everything up. They're really good for taking care of, you know, scrap wood trash around the yard or just sitting around having a massive bonfire so hopefully y'all enjoyed this i had fun building it had a few little hiccups today that's why it took so long here it is almost dark had to run a town get some things that thought i had that i didn't wire up the plug to the welder because i forgot i unwired that <laughs> to wire in the uh what do i wire in the shop last time or the rv plug so that was another surprise that's the way it goes so i had to go get another breaker too so storm shelter Yes, here's the slab. Uh, probably not in the next video, but the video after, because I want to show y'all all the tanks and stuff that I went and got, but the video after, we're building it. I got several cool days, 0% chance of rain is perfect. So by the time you watch this, I've already started the build. I'll start recording some videos, and I will have those out to you very soon. And uh, to the gentleman getting this fire pit, I'm about to give you a phone call right now. We'll figure out when to get it to you, but I hope you enjoyed it, had fun building it. I think it should last you a long, long time to come. And if any of y'all would like some fire pits, um, stick, stick around for the next video. I'll show you my inventory now, and uh, maybe we can work out building you one in between me doing storm shelter, house build, all that stuff. Definitely not going into fire pit business full time, but I can always make, you know, a little day here and there, take a break from the house, do a little welding. So, you know, drop me a comment, let me know. Appreciate y'all watching. We'll catch you on the next video.